Most Washington state women gained the vote in 1910 as only the fifth state to permanently enact women's suffrage and the first in the 20th century. It was a state by state battle as the movement went from west to east. However, by 1916, the suffrage movement changed to advocate for a federal constitutional amendment. Through both peaceful and more militant activism by suffragists, Congress finally passed the 19th Amendment in June 1919 on to the states for ratification. 36 were needed for ratification. Since the Washington legislature only met every two years and had already concluded the 1919 session and would not meet again until 1921, Governor Lewis Hart was pressured to call a special session to in part assure that women could vote in the 1920 presidential election. He was reluctant but finally called a session for March 22, 1920, after 34 other states had already ratified. According to the history of women's suffrage, the Capitol was thronged with women who had traveled from every corner of the state to participate in this occasion. Every available seat in the balconies of both houses was filled and the aisles and corridors were crowded. The hope and expectation that any moment the wires might flash the news that Delaware had ratified and Washington would thus be the 36th and final state to enfranchise the women of the whole nation, lent an added thrill to the proceedings. The governor opened the session and remarked that the state has done well under the management of both men and women. Longtime suffrage workers abounded. These four women who are here today were present for the vote. Whether they visited the governor's mansion that day is unknown, but their remarks and other material are from contemporary and other published sources. This program is provided with support from the Washington State Women's Commission and the Washington State Historical Society through the Votes for Women Centennial Grant Program. Hello, I'm Frances Haskell of Tacoma. I'm a member of the Washington State House of Representatives where I have served since 1919. I'm just the fourth woman elected to the legislature and I was the lone woman serving there until Representative Anna Caldwell joined us this session. My background, I studied at Carnegie Hall and the Columbia School of Oratory in Chicago, Illinois. I am sometimes known as the wise woman of the legislature. In my tenure there, I've championed legislation to equalize pay between men and women teachers and to make sure they have adequate retirement. But my proudest moment was when I was selected to introduce the resolution in the Washington State House of Representatives to ratify the 19th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution extending the right to vote for women nationally. As I said, in part, this is a very important hour in the history of our state and nation to prove to the world the greatness of our evergreen state, which is not determined by the number of acres that it contains, nor by its population, but by the character of its men and women who are today extending to all the women of America the privilege of the ballot. I arranged for the mother of suffrage in our state, Emma Smith DeVoe, to be present in the House of Representatives and make remarks. Hello, I am Emma Smith DeVoe, now from Parkland, near Tacoma. I was privileged to be a leader when Washington women achieved the vote in 1910. And then in 1911, I was instrumental in getting the National Council of Women Voters formed in our headquarters in Tacoma. We voting women, mostly from the West, worked with Congress to further the 19th Amendment for the women's voting rights, sometimes called the Susan B. Anthony Amendment. I am honored that Representative Haskell invited me to address the 1920 legislature 
and was pleased to be present as part of the ratification proceedings in the House. At that time, I said, I am proud of the legislature of Washington because of this patriotic act. And I thank you in the name of our forefathers who first proclaimed that taxation without representation is tyranny and that government without consent is unjust. I thank you in the name of the early suffrage workers who have passed to their beautiful reward. I thank you in the name of the women of the United States of today, who will, I trust, use their new political freedom wisely and well. I thank you in the name of the children, of the children who will come after us. They will have a better, broader, and nobler heritage than was ours. And I personally thank you from the depths of my heart. God bless you, everyone. Hi, friends. I'm Anna K. Caldwell, representative from Snohomish County. I was just elected in March of 1920, and this is my first session in the legislature. How exciting to be here for this important vote. As an Everett native, I've been proud of Washington's status as the fifth state to permanently enact women's suffrage in 19... And I am proud that the legislature is empowering women nationally with the vote. As I said during the ratification vote, I'm confident that the women of the state of Washington feel the honor paid them in the calling of this special session to ratify the amendment. This confidence comes from the fact that the women of the state have had the franchise long enough so that the men know whether they have abused it or not. During the times of war and the times of peace, we have never heard the term female slacker. We were justly intended to become women, to become men's equal, and that the men of Washington are progressive enough to see this. I'm Carrie Linnell Hill, Seattle resident, longtime suffragist, and member of the Christian Women's Temperance Union. Women in Washington Territory voted in the 1880s, but we lost it. We lost it twice by judicial decision. We tried again in 1889, and 1898, but it failed to ratify. I was president of the Washington Equal Suffrage Association for many years. I worked with Emma Smith-DeVoe and May Hutton and others in the 1909 lobbying effort, which was eventually ratified by the big brain men of Washington in 1910. I was grateful to be asked to address the state Senate as part of the 1920 affirmative vote. Here is what I said. It is a wonderful thing that not only the state of Washington enjoys this privilege, that now we hope every woman in the whole United States will enjoy the privilege to vote. For a number of years, we boasted of only four states in the union which enjoyed women's suffrage. At last, Washington carried the day, giving an impetus to the cause which had lain dormant for so long. Immediately, other Western states joined the ranks and has gone on until now. May we always appreciate what it means to live in a state whose men gave this voting right to women. The Washington legislature ratified the amendment unanimously on March 22, 1920, only the 12th state to cast a unanimous vote. Shortly afterwards, Secretary of State I. M. Howell signed the resolution ratifying the amendment. The governor was then bound to send it to the U.S. Secretary of State, President of the U.S. Senate, and Speaker of the House of Representatives. However, the 36th and final state to ratify the 19th Amendment 
was Tennessee, where a young legislator, Harry Byrne, cast the deciding vote on August 18, 1920, on the advice of his mother. And the amendment became effective then on August 26, 1920. But there was more work to do. Most Native American women could not become citizens until 1924. Immigrant Asian women were precluded from citizenship until the mid 20th century. Women could lose their vote through marriage to a non-citizen and African American women were often barred from voting by structural restrictions until the Voting Rights Act in the 1960s. 18 year old voting was enacted in the 1970s. And the legislature continues to work on empowering voting for all citizens.